William Edwards Deming said, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. Time to get rid of some opinion. Welcome back to the laboratory. We're still working on the Mustang. Got a few things to work out still before I can go back to work on some other projects. A couple things to do on the GTO yet, and then we can finally get back to working on the Epic. We just installed our new rebuilt blueprinted clutch back in the Mustang, so we want to tune it properly, and for that, we need data. We need hard data, not just seat of the pants, how this feels. So that's where our race pack comes in. Specifically, what we really need to monitor is the slip and that's going to be the difference between what the engine speed is doing, what the engine RPM is doing, and what the input shaft speed on the transmission is doing. The difference between those two, well, the ratio between those two, more technically, uh, is going to give us the percentage that the clutch is slipping. And that's what we're trying to adjust. We're trying to adjust that slip so that the RPM doesn't bog, and we still have a nice smooth engagement. We're not hitting the clutch it's not completely locking up and hitting the tires and breaking transmissions and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is, because we don't have an input shaft speed sensor, we're going to use drive shaft speed and then compare it to engine speed. So we know what the gear ratios are in the transmission, so we can use math channels in the race pack to calculate what the slip is. If we know what the drive shaft speed is, if we know what gear it's in, we know what the transmission ratio is, we can then calculate the slip percentage when compared to the engine speed. So the key things that we want to data log are engine speed and drive shaft speed. The other stuff that's going to come along is going to be, you know, wideband. And we got all kinds of extra channels that we can use in the future. But for right now, the key thing is engine RPM and drive shaft RPM. So we're going to get this thing out of the box. We're going to get it in the car and we're going to start hooking things up. We've got the main parts of the race pack out of the box now. And by the way, if I ever do an unboxing video on this channel, feel free to unsubscribe. So we've got the main data logging unit. We've got harnesses that go to the drive shaft speed sensor. We've got harnesses that go to the, the VNet system. And we've got bracket. We've got speed sensor. And then we've got the collar that goes around the rear end yoke. Now, these are specific to the size of yoke that you've got. So I've got a big pinion 9 inch in the Mustang right now, so I needed the one that is two and one eighth uh, diameter to fit on that, uh, on that yoke. To mount this thing, it needs to be mounted in a specific direction because there is an onboard accelerometer, which is also a very useful thing to get acceleration data. Where I'm gonna mount this in my Mustang is going to be on the floor behind the passenger seat. Uh, I still got an old school crane interceptor that's been bolted down there since the 1980s. Like this car is OG50 and it's got some OG50 stuff still on there. So obviously I'm not using that interceptor anymore, but it's perfect location. There's some bracketry down there that is um, bolted to the um, roll bar and to the seat track, I believe. So I can make new brackets to locate this thing. Uh, I can access a tax signal from the MSD, which is underneath the dash, not too far away. Uh, and, and that's actually the green wire that's coming out of the MSD, so I can split that green wire um, that's going to the TAC right now and get a tax signal for the race pack from there uh, as well. And when I pull up the carpet in that area, there's actually a hole in the floor with a uh, rubber plug in there right now that I can run the harness through um, out to the back of the car to the uh, drive shaft speed sensor. So let's uh, let's get after that. Let's um, let's take the passenger seat out so we can we can pull the carpet back, and let's get that interceptor out of there and all of its harnessing, and then get some bracketry made uh, for this thing, and let's get it mounted in there.
So it turns out that the brackets that I was using to mount the interceptor uh, on the floor, uh, the outboard bracket, it looks like I can reuse it. The bolt pattern is really, really close to the race pack one, and it's close enough that I can just slot out one of these holes or, or both of them um, and then use that bracket to mount the race pack. Um, on the inboard side, clearly you can see that the existing bracket is, is going to be too short, but I can use this bracket as a template and just extend it and then make sure that I've got the right bolt pattern for the race pack, but I can still use the, the roll bar mount um, on the inboard side and not have to drill holes in my floorboards to mount the race pack. So that's the plan. All right, next step is we're gonna run the wiring harness out to our drive shaft speed sensor. So this, um, this harness has got two things going on. It's got um, the drive shaft sensor harness in gray, and then this orange wire here is a 12 volt event uh, marker. So I could hook this up to a switch if I wanted to press the switch at any point during the data log to mark any kind of event. I got really no plans to do anything like that. So we're just gonna tuck this uh, under the carpet and not worry about it. Uh, so, let's do another twist tie on here. That was hiding on me. We're gonna feed this through our hole where we had a rubber plug in the floorboards. And I've made my own uh, grommet for that. We'll seal that up after the fact. But we'll get this started and then we'll make sure that everything's properly routed and properly tie wrapped underneath there. And then the excess, we can just uh, tuck underneath the, underneath the carpet. I got no intention of, uh, of cutting this thing and, and splicing it. So let's get underneath the car and let's get that wiring harness uh, routed and uh, tie wrapped. For the drive shaft sensor, we need to place uh, this eight magnet ring around the yoke. So this splits in half. We'll put that on there. And then we've got the sensor and this mounting bracket. So this is just like it's made for a, a nine inch Ford. So we're just gonna pull out one of the pinion bearing retainer bolts and we're gonna use the one on the side here. It's tight with the mufflers. I don't want to use the bottom one because it's just way too vulnerable for road trash and stuff grabbing the wire. And on the top side, it gets too close to the pinion snubber. Uh, so we're going to split the difference and go halfway up the side here and then make sure that we route the wire away from the mufflers. This is the hole where we had a plug in the floorboards. So we've dropped our drive shaft sensor cable through there. We fed in a whole bunch of extra slack. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna route this. We've got fuel lines and we've got brake lines um, along the inside of the pinch weld here. And we can follow these things all the way out to the back behind the muffler. And then we can make the connection to our uh, drive, sa drive shaft speed sensor without uh, having to cut or splice uh, anything. So let's get this thing uh, routed, let's get it plugged in, and then we'll make sure that we get everything nicely tie wrapped. All right, we're plugged in. 
So now it's just a matter of routing all of this stuff as tightly as we can, tie wrapping it nicely, and uh, making sure it's away from heat and, and other uh, danger. Okay, and here we can see how the, uh, the harness plugs into the drive shaft sensor, and again, it just fits nicely through the middle of that isolator used to hang the muffler, so that'll keep everything nice and tight. Keeps all the cables away from the hot muffler parts, and uh, hopefully it keeps everything uh, safe and happy. All right, we've got our cable routed. We've got tire apps to fuel lines, brake lines, brake lines, fuel lines, and then we've made our own custom grommet to try and keep uh, road splash and stuff like that out as it goes through the floor. So that's all we need to do underneath the car now. So the rest of it is just hook up the wiring inside. So let's get after that. All right, we got our drive shaft sensor wire up through the floor. We got a whole bunch extra. Uh, so we're just going to tuck this under the carpet. I'm not going to start cutting and splicing stuff. Uh, that's, you know, unnecessary. I don't mind the extra little weight of, uh, of this much. So we can plug that in. Uh, and then the other harness that we've got to plug in here is the uh, the power uh, tack and record. So this one, again, I can run it under the carpet. I can get a tack signal from the uh, the MSD uh, for power. The car's a radio delete, but it's still got the harness back there for the radio. So I can pull power off the radio harness. Uh, and then the last thing is the on-off switch to start recording. So I've got a spot in the console where I've got my own little switch panel that I made 100 years ago, and there's just enough room to add this switch in there too. So we'll run the trigger wire under the carpet uh, to the console uh, to that switch as well, and that switch just needs to ground. Um, so And this is power, ground, um, tack, and, uh, and the record signal too. So let's get after running these wires and, uh, and getting the rest of the stuff hooked up.
got the race pack in and all wired up now. So we used a little splitter terminal that came in the kit for the tack hookup so that we could hook up the tack and the race pack on the same output from the MSD under the dash. We hooked up the power to our unused radio power connector. We installed the momentary switch here in our little switch panel so that we can start the data log and that just goes to a ground um, on the dash here as well along with the main ground for the uh, the race pack as well. So at this point we can turn the key on, look for the blinking LED when we start logging, make sure everything is good uh, and then uh, hook up our computer and let's see that we're getting live data and uh, take out the SD card and let's see that it's saving the data. All right, so we got the race pack in. I didn't get a chance to put the VNet channel in for the wideband because of the way the VNet connector goes in. I'd have to have the race pack mounted up on stilts for this thing to be able to plug into it, so that wasn't going to happen. So I needed to order an extension cord, uh, a VNet extension cord, uh, and that's going to take a couple of weeks before I uh, get that, so I can hook up the wideband then. Now. That wasn't a high priority. I wanted engine RPM and dry shaft RPM so that I could do some clutch tuning. Uh, this was kind of a last minute thing for a last race date uh, of the year. Um, for those of you that have been following this channel for a while, you know that I don't edit out the fail. And there's been lots of fail um, historically, and this is no different. So uh, Friday night, uh, I got the race pack in, uh, fired the thing up, uh, quickly got a uh, good RPM trace uh, in the race pack. Uh, the next morning, put the seat back in, buttoned everything all back up together, uh, took it for a test drive to get the dry shaft RPM, and overnight my MSD crapped out and uh, didn't have an RPM signal. Um, so I took it out anyway and ran the thing at 3000 RPM, uh, engine RPM, so then just using the stock tack, which still works in my car, fortunately. Uh, but I didn't get an RPM trace in uh, in the race pack, but I got a drive shaft uh, speed. So I was looking for a 3000 RPM drive shaft speed and I got it. So um, I'm happy with that. So if we look at the data logs, this is the first data log here. This is the engine speed when I just fired it up for a few seconds. So we're at about uh, 1700 RPM when the engine first fires up. Uh, so got a good trace there. Uh, the next day, uh, again, took it for a drive. So this is looking at the data log from uh, from the tweaker. So in the upper chart here, I started the race pack logging right about here where I was off the gas and coasting down uh, to turn a corner. Uh, and then I went up through all the gears. And then once I got it into fifth gear, I tried to hold it at about 3000 RPM other than a couple of blips of the throttle that you can see here. So at this point, we're at about 2950 uh, RPM in the middle of that. And if I go to the race pack log, uh, this is showing our drive shaft speed now. So coasting, going up through the gears, uh, and then stabilized at, uh, at highway speed. And our RPM here is about 2950. So we know we've got good drive shaft speed. It matches the engine speed. In fifth gear, we're in one to one. So the engine speed and the drive shaft speed should be the same, and they were. So we know that we've got the race pack dry shaft speed configured properly. So that's all good news. Bad news is I'm out of race dates for the year. I uh, got to fix the car, got to find another MSD. I uh, got to wait for my VNet extension to come in before I can hook up the wideband. So lots of fail. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.